And now we're actually recording. So now I'm actually going to do this. Brought to you by some guys on the internet. This is getting tabled. With your hosts, Jason the Bruce. You guy! George the Yang. I hope you're all entertained by my inaptitude. Jason, a.k.a. Major Socks. We've been doing this and talking about various stuff. One of the stuff. Now sit back, relax, and get tabled. Hello, future people, and welcome back to Getting Tabled with your host, The Bruce. Hello, folks. It's been an interesting couple of weeks. Good to be back. And, of course, with us we have George the Yank. Mr. He thinks 22 degrees is hot, and I think that's in- insanely pathetic. For, for where I live, it is. Um, and you yeah, heard the disembodied voice of... Uh, the yeah you, and they heard the disembodied voice of major socks who he is not here because he he had to go play at a tournament poor poor man is currently packing up after but, a tournament but but if he did if he wasn't doing that he still wouldn't be able to be here because his computer went <laughs> yeah quite literally the motherboard died yeah yeah he, he sent me a message on like a, a two a wednesday he was just like hey quick question for you i'm like what <laughs> yeah did he try um, turning it on and off again doesn't matter the motherboard's dead well no when he first contacted me the uh wireless card wasn't working interesting and i was just like huh try rolling back your updates you know blah 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 blah. he's just like yeah well i don't think that's the issue because my son's computer did the did the updates too and it's working too and i'm like are they the same thing swap the wireless cards and see if that fixes it and then like the next day he's like yeah, so uh, my motherboard died. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah, it's bad. Yeah. So that was, yeah, the start of death. Yeah. <laughs> just, just the beginning. Uh, so now we're gonna do uh, this right here. Newly received or noteworthy information, especially about recent or important events. Very do we good. have any newly received or noteworthy events to talk about? We do. But before we do, I want to quickly say thank you very much to those that support us. If you enjoy our content, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash getting tabled. All right, let's move across to some news. All right, so in our first story, we are looking at Space Nam. And yes, that name is as silly as it sounds. So we've actually discussed the Space Nam stuff before. That's not really the story here. Uh, though in saying that, there has been an update to the minis since then. Um, you, the very first time we discussed the Space Nam, these were the figures that was the Duke Nukem and the Rambo, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, that was all totally not those things. Um, these are alternate models for Katachan, uh, given that a certain company clearly is refusing to listen to refuses to do them yeah yeah uh, um but that the fact that these are there is not the story because even the new sculpts of these have been around for a while the story here is that war games atlantic are doing a release of them in hard plastic that's the story here this is currently on pre-order for september this was pointed out to us by michelle uh, who didn't actually remember that we discussed them before. Though, to be, like I said, that, that the scops have been updated since we originally spoke about them. Um, and quite frankly, the price on this is quite nice. You're looking at... Um, you're looking at 40 bucks for a box of 20 minis, which is pretty much on par for most plastic minis. Uh, if you buy but in multiple wait. boxes, you get discounts. Yeah, the, 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 the best deal there, obviously... Buy ten boxes for two ninety nine. Yeah, that's thirty dollars a box. I don't need four hundred minis. No, two hundred minis. I can math. Are you sure? I, I can math. I think. Um, no, like th- these are absolutely incredible. Um, I have been wanting to buy these for a while. They normally get sold as three uh, D sculpts. Uh, there are a few other places that you can buy them. 
like where you can pay for people to um 3D print them for you. It is a thing that there's a few 3D printing companies are doing now. But the fact that this is legitimately being released as hard plastic minis is something we haven't really seen done a lot, especially hard plastic. I mean, it's one thing to do and turn around and go, hey, well, it's a resin sculpt. I mean, we definitely know that there's companies doing it. But this is proper hard plastic on sprue. This is being released as an actual product. And War Games yeah. and Atlantic are not... I mean, they're not big, but they're not tiny. Because let's see, uh, you know, Games Workshop, obviously. Uh, drop Fleet and Drop Zone under Hawk for their core boxes. Those are hard plastic. I don't know if they're still doing those. I think they yes, are, they aren't are. they? Yes, the, they are. So the core boxes, the, the base stuff everyone needs, um, your your stuff, uh, ships. Dystopian Wars. Yep. That was that was what was that? That was that was hard plastic too? Yeah. So hard plastic okay. is one of these things where and um, yeah, yeah. I know that it's fairly well I want to say that it's well known, but there's still a lot of people in in the customer space that don't seem to realise why a lot of companies don't do hard plastic. It's very expensive to set up. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Like paying the, the, the mold molds, right there to the yeah. paying for the molds is insanely expensive. Um, Thousands of dollars. Yes. Long term like it does work out to be very affordable, but most oh, companies yeah. can't afford that sort of layout. So I mean look at Games Workshop even. I mean how much of their stuff is still not hard plastic because you know it's the one model and you know Yeah. They're going to need to sell literally tens of thousands of those to make up the cost of that mold to make that hard plastic. I'm not sure I'd give them that much leeway, but sure. Okay. Oh, yeah. I mean, okay, thousands. So they'll have to sell thousands at yeah. least for sure. But with the, you have to remember that the markup that Games Workshop have is much higher than most of the industry as well. So the amount that they have to sell is much lower than most. Well, they've got a big building. They've got statues. You know, they've got all this other stuff they have to pay for too. So, yeah. So yeah, I, I instantly went, oh my god, I will be buying some of these to check out on the channel at some stage. I can't say that I'll have them at the start of September, but I have wanted to do a kill team for the Catachan for a very long time. And this will be what I will buy to do them. Because uh, I have the Games Workshop ones, and I hate them. They do have nice characters, but the actual yeah. troops suck. Um, the Katachan models, like the actual troop models, weren't good when they came out. And that was 20 years ago. I mean, the the best one we have right now is the Colonel that is extremely limited because... It's actual plastic. It was done fairly recently. Yeah. Um, I can't. But they do was have the, was the, that good too. Yeah. Was was the Sly Marble upda updated or is that the same sculpt? Nope. Sly Marble was redone in hard plastic the year before the one that you've got. But the Sly Marble I got was a uh, fine cast, I think. Shouldn't be. Mine wasn't. Ah. Uh, I haven't cracked the plastic on it, so I'll have to take a look at that. Um, but I, I, I think this group of guys right here, I think that would go great for, you know, the current of the new, uh, Catachan, the, the, yeah. the old stuff that's still metal. I mean, don't get me wrong, you know, Corvus Belly, their, their metal minis are great and stuff like that. I don't like metal minis because I don't like having tiny little metal Yay. things flying through. Somebody agrees with me. Yay. Oh, what's that? You like metal? No, you're wrong. No, 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 it's not an opinion. You're wrong. Metal is horrible. No, no, you're wrong. I, I'm arguing with I, our I, audience. Yeah, I had a, uh, I had a, a Space Marine Dreadnought that was all yeah, that, pewter. That, yeah, that never that, held up either. The um, Krutox for the that, Tau had the same problem of never actually meeting in the middle and rocking. Well, no, my issue was is, uh, it came off its base. The magnets I put on the base held. The glue did not hold the mini onto the base. 
And so it went crashing through the toolbox that I used to carry the minis in. And yeah. all of them were either broken or chip paint or, yeah, because the Dreadnought is about the size of a fist and it's pewter and it just went through yeah. everything. So um, I, I think say, this is great. Yeah, I, I am going to say this very quickly just because I suspect that people will be shouting at the screen. Yes, we do know that the Katachan models are hard plastic. I was talking about the quality of the models. Um, and the characters are mostly in either metal or fine cast, unfortunately. Um, I would love to see them redo some of those characters. Yeah, they're, they're still available in metal because they made 30 gajillion of them back in the day when they first made them and they haven't sold them all yet. No, 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 no it's all, it's all, re <laughs> it's all fine cast now. It's been all fine cast for years. No. Uh, a couple of years ago, um, when I, when I got the Colonel and I ordered the Sly Marlboro, uh, there was like three of the the special characters for the Katachans that were that said this is a metal model. Oh, interesting. So they yeah. have gone back on because they were resin there for quite a while. All of them at one point. No, the the couple of them, I think they were still just. I I, I think they made so many of them that they're just sitting around in inventory still as metal. So you say what struck and is metal? Uh, I Iron can't remember hand? which one it was. I think the the guy with the metal arms. I think I think it said that this is a metal miniature. Hmm, nice. Okay, but, no, I don't. That, I don't need to buy Catachan stuff. No. God knows they're already doing. No, stuff. you need to buy this. You need to buy oh, this. No, you I'm, said, I'm buying this. I've already said I'm buying. <laughs> this. All right, we're gonna move on. And given that we never talk about Games Workshop stuff, I thought we might talk about Games Workshop stuff. Sounds like a great idea. Um, um obviously, I I'm love being this. Yeah, no, I, love I love this. this by the well. way. I love this. Um, this is uh, Moon Mars Rover meets uh, the Battlefield. The thing I spoke about on the last episode, as I said, we need to start seeing something that's not all looking the same. And the very next thing we saw, I think two days later, was oh, this looks very different in a good way. Um, they've done really, really well on this. And, oh, hey, look. The actual mini inside looks different as well. I love specifically, I love the older gentleman. Like that that face in particular really, really screams at me. Um Yeah, I he's the guy that yells really at you to well. get off your off his lawn, you damn teenager. Yeah. <laughs> uh they've done really well with this. This actually looks like it might be heavily magnetizable as well. Because those weapons I suspect that the very base of the weapon and probably the surround is all the same pieces. Uh, so it's just um, the internal of the gun that you would have to swap in and out. And I suspect so, that you would actually be able to friction fit that. So looking at the turret, the top one, the side plates are different from the bottom one, so that looks like a whole different piece. So the that base looks like it's usable. Uh, then the, the the base looks like the only part that's used oh, yeah. on all three. Everything else is completely different. So if Games better, Workshop, though. if Games Workshop is really nice to us, each one of those guns will have their own base, so you can just go plop, 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 and magnetizing is easy enough. Sam can do it. They won't all have their own base. You you will have to magnetize yeah. it onto the base. But Which you know, I even still you'll be able to friction fit it. Yeah. Even still, though, like if 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 that one base is the you know common between all three, that would still be easy enough to magnetize that base to the different guns. Yeah, and the good thing is is that because this comes with multiple heads, hey, you've also got more heads to use with your trips as well. Um, though you probably want to avoid using the ones that have like a microphone on their face, so you'd want to use the two younger ones. Because the older gentleman, if he was in your infantry, would look a little bit odd with a microphone on his head. No, it's just his microphone for giving commands over the radio. Actually, that's not a bad point. Yeah. No, yeah, I like that. I, I really like this, but not as much as the next one. Wait, is it the next one? Yes, it's the next one. What's How next many one? times have I said I want new crew models? Uh, literally just about any time we mention the Tau, new stuff, Xenos, or anything like that for Games Workshop. Yeah. And, and I do remember this, because literally, we finished recording. We, we, we went to sleep here in the United States. You went about your day. The next day, 
they they released this and you were yeah. like <laughs> they were listening <laughs> um so there's two sides to this number one it's not an army it's a kill team um ironically the kill team rules for the crew are not very good um they, they don't hold up very well but we're getting new crew models and this is the important thing here because there's not a small community that have been asking for this is that a crew tox or no the crew tox is the big thing no the crew tox right? is the big gorilla looking thing that's just yeah, a yeah, crew yeah, yeah i love okay the yeah yeah i do i actually like the original crew towns i think they hold up well but this is a nice improvement um i like the fact that there's actually a harness there that actually feels like a harness because the, the 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 fine cast stuff doesn't hold um one of these models is not new um there's one one of these is actually from uh the black library game that came out a couple of years ago but otherwise this is all new i look all of the kill team boxes sell like hotcakes it's just something that happens but this is a chance to prove to games workshop that there's a lot of people that want to buy crude stuff and yeah. as much as we know that there is this proves it, though there's a chance that they'll just turn around and just do, oh, that means everybody wants the Navy stuff. And don't get me wrong, the Navy stuff looks great too. It's not what I, was I gonna say, dude, in the box, but they look great. Dude with that breacher gun on his uh, riot shield? Yeah, I know. Oh, oh. That's so good. I, like, he, if he doesn't have a save of, of two up with, like, a reroll, there's something wrong with his rules with that kind of shield. I don't think anybody has anything like that in Kill Team. I could be wrong. That's love. But I'm just a shield like that screams two up. I mean, come on, yeah. it's a walking wall of metal. I mean, <laughs> this also does come with terrain as well because it is one of the big Kill Team boxes. It is unfortunately going to mean that this is going to be expensive. Um, my hope is that I'm going to be able to split with somebody and just buy the crude stuff from them. Because the rules for the crew are not very good, I suspect that it won't be very hard for me to get a cop get get a thing of the crew, because I don't want the terrain. I'm I'm not hating on the terrain. It is actually quite nice what we see of it, uh, but I really don't need terrain, kill team or otherwise. That's junk. Oh, <laughs> it's quite literally junk. It's supposed to be. Um, <laughs> there are rumors out there at the moment that. The way they're doing their boxes is changing. Um, they talk here about how they're being thematically linked through the terrain, and it looks like the way that they're going is they're going to force you to buy all of the boxes because it's all going to be linked to how the missions play, that you have to have certain items from the terrain. That is not something I'm going to speak highly of because... Lord knows, Games Workshop, you didn't need even more predatory business practices. Uh, I'm kind of hoping that this is the usual hate on Games Workshop, um, exaggerating what their intentions are. Because I'm not saying that that's what they're doing. I'm just saying that's what the rumor is. And let's be fair, the rumor mill sometimes decide to hate on Games Workshop more than they need to. So... But if that's the direction they go, I will throw shade forever at them. I am not afraid to throw shade at Games Workshop if we need to. And they just brought shades back, so you'll have lots of shade to throw. True. Actually, we, yeah. <laughs> they brought them back, but slightly weaker. But I actually think that's a good thing. Probably because people are going to throw it at them. Yeah. <laughs> and we have some Blood Bowl stuff. Uh, it's not the Blood Bowl stuff I want, but it's it, it's a sign that there's still stuff happening. So the Amazons are here. Um, they look really. <laughs> they look like Aztecs, not Amazons. So yeah, which is fine. Mm. But it's it's very see. Here's the thing I find odd about that is that yeah, but that's the Lizardman stuff. Lizardmen are your Aztecs, so why are you doing it with these guys as well? I mean... Girls. Amazons. They're, Amazons are women, Bruce. 
I was using it more in a general term, but I can't. Oh. <laughs> um, I do like the look of these. They, they do look really nice. Um, I love the little like the, the the little frilly feathers on the snakes is great. Mm-hmm. Um, I do find it amusing that even in their own marketing, they're showing that there's only like four or five sculpts here, because there's the same mini used several times. Right. Um, I I'm okay with this. I do think they they look good. Um, I'm never gonna call them the Amazons though. I'm just gonna call them the Aztecs, and just be done with it. I'm. I, I think they're good. I think they'll sell well. I have no intention of buying them. Like a hundred percent. Like that. There's no money of of mine that'll go towards these. But they're not for me. Um. I. It gives me hope that we may actually get Chaos Dwarves, but. I still think they're no, they're they're they're, they're, they're they're not going to do that ju- just for you. They're not going to do it. Possibly, it's all right. They gave you crew, Bruce. Don't don't get too greedy now. To be fair, I do have mixed opinions on the Blood Bowl game. It's not like I really need to get into it. Um, I'm not going to give my opinions on the Blood Bowl game because I will not get. I will not survive the hatred for my opinions. All right, moving on. Not to that. Infinity. We spoke last episode about the new box set that was coming. Well, they've actually done a reveal trailer. It's up now on the Corvus Belly YouTube channel. I'm just going to skip through this a bit. I am viewing it right now. Yeah. So we did know already that it was Hack Islam versus Aleph. Uh, so that's those two icons that you see. And then we start going into the actual models that's coming coming in it. Um, so we have we have some views here of the infantry. Uh, it doesn't really look like there's anything super huge. Like there's no massive giant models coming in this. There's a few bigger ones, but this looks like a fairly nice even spread of models, honestly. I quite like it. I mean, you've got the two, like, you've got the two slightly bigger than normal minis there in the front uh, facing off against each other, but everybody else is just an infantry. It feels nice and balanced. Uh, I think this looks good as far as... uh, These are sculpted bases, and they will not come on those sculpted bases. Uh, They will have normal, boring bases. Uh, the terrain actually looks quite nice as well. It's the same cardboard terrain that you always get. But I was going to say to this looks something. like. Some... Yeah. Th- this cardboard looks like a uh, really thin MDF. Like it, it's really super well done. It looks like. I like the fact that they're not just doing boxes. Somewhere in this trailer, there's like a triangle building, which I thought was really nice looking. Yeah. Uh, I can't seem to find it here at the moment, but. Like yeah, this, it was like the first really thirty good. seconds. Yeah, um, like there, and there's just some good dynamic poses on these minis. I mean, and, and like I said, I don't like metal minis, and Corvus Belly just—they're like, fine, we don't care if you like metal minis or not, but we're just gonna make them so damn good looking that you will like them. Yeah, um, I have been buying Infinity stuff for years. Despite my very public hatred of metal minis, uh, and this is not a new thing, I have been saying and ranting about metal minis for decades. Well, not decades, but a good 13, 14 years, I've been having a very strong opinion against metal, but I still continue to buy Infinity stuff. I did stop at one point, but now I'm back in. Um, because I'm like, no, I want to play this this year. And so I've bought more stuff. Because goodness knows what I really need is more stuff. No. Um, towards the end of the trailer, um, here's where they're gonna get you. Corvus Belly Infinity Gen Con bundle includes a pre-order exclusive edition of Pandora and a Dire Foes mission pack with three characters, and then you get a Helen of Troy free limited edition deal. So So this is the same sort of thing they do every year at Gen Con. They always have a big release uh with minis that you will not get outside of it 
you will usually end up getting an alternate sculpt of these exclusive things later on. Um, or you just get things that are like, doesn't really matter if you have them or not. Um, so in the past, there was one where it was a motorbike character and the exclusive was that same character, but off the bike so that you could have them unmounted. Um, and that's sort of something that you didn't really need to play. Uh, I think this is a good looking bundle, honestly. Um, I uh like i said the the terrain i think the terrain is just absolutely astounding i mean for for cardboard terrain in a core box essentially you know name a game that has great cardboard terrain out of the box yeah there's a very small number of them i i i i think you could do that on one hand pretty easily um So let, let, let me let me take that back. Uh, a core game, you know, box game where you have enough cardboard terrain that's good to do a game. Yes, and this is like this is a table ready to go. Um, could you add stuff to it? I mean, yes, and you probably should. But you could, le you can legitimately play Infinity with this stuff. Uh, and Infinity is very terrain heavy. It's a very terrain heavy game. Um, it's, it's, it's a game where you really need to have your terrain set up and it needs to be tightly packed because you need to avoid I would, having too many firing lines. I would argue in Infinity, one four by four board, there's enough terrain on that to do at least, uh, one and a half four by sixes. Yeah, I'll agree with that. If not two four by sixes. Yeah, well, it's part of their point of difference. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, for sure. I mean, you know, if you're in, you know, the city and you're doing stuff and you're trying to snipe someone, there's going to be a damn building in the way at some point. Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> yeah, otherwise the game just opens up too much. And if you have a game that's opened up too much, then like, when you have a game that's designed so that you can react to people's actions all the time, you're going to end up with two armies full of dead people uh, very quickly. So you need to have all of that cover in place for the game to work. But let's continue moving on because weird are releasing weird nightmarish looking things. Uh, and what? I might, yeah, I know it's so unusual for them. So we have an alternate version of the, uh, I'm forgetting what his name is, of the Hoffman box. Uh, and it's called the Fallen Kingdom, and it's all it's all really different, weird looking stuff. Hoffman's like this giant knight guy on a nightmare mount. Um, all of his guys. <laughs> this is a giant guy with an axe. It looks it almost looks like it's trying to be um, Pyramid Head or whatever his name is from. Um, oh yeah, yeah, Silent Hill. Silent Hill. Everything's very, 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 very different. Um, you've also got some hollow fiends here that look quite nice uh, that are instead of... I can't remember how to pronounce that. Um, I think Hoffman is like my favourite thing in that box. He just looks great. Or oh, sorry, Lord Gallahawk. He just looks amazing. Um, I... I don't play this faction, but, ooh, is this box tempting me. Uh, you've also got a few other things that they've shown off as well. Uh, there's a walking fortress box um, that we're only seeing the front of at the moment. Uh, we're also seeing the new Miss Minis. So every year there's new exclusive minis, which is like a, um, a gen gender swap of characters. So... Miss Teak, and yes, they do that pun with all of them. Uh, so this is an alternate for Carlos Vasquez. Um, so we've got like Miss Teak. In the past, we've had Miss Turi, uh, Miss Take. Oh no, that was this one. Uh, like there's there's Miss something that's just a play on words all the time. Uh, miss Teak is probably one of the better ones I've seen, honestly. 
I was gonna uh, say that's a that's a great looking mini. All of all of their stuff is, quite frankly. Um, I kind of want to see more on the Walking Fortress because we don't really see much more of that. <sighs> Legends Reforged is another one. So this is Legends Reformed is coming with a replacement for the peak for the Peacekeeper. And Charles Hoffman is the Lord Galahad. So they're all coming as different things. It just looks really pretty. It's really pretty and I really want it. Even though I don't play this and I'm never playing this faction. But I kind of want this. <laughs> Weird of getting me again. Also, can I just say, I, I love the fact that at the very start of the video, the first thing that happens is that imp guy comes onto the screen and says, blah, blah, blah. I love that. It's so dumb, but I love that so much. So yeah, we'd continue to do <laughs> wonderful looking things. Um, I just watch it and some go blah blah blah. Yeah. Um very quickly, they've also released hang on, let's scroll down. We now have a look at the September releases, which is uh, Dia de los Metos. It's the big Mexican thing. And it's all skeletons dressed up in outfits because, of course, it is. It's De la de los Metos. Dia de los Muertos. That too. I knew I was saying it wrong, but I couldn't, I couldn't correct myself. Um, so this is an alternate box for Lady Justice. Another one because she already had an alternate box. Uh, but again, really, really pretty. Uh, coming up in the same month, so this is for September. We also finally get the um, Euripides Old One Eye, which is a box I've been waiting on for a while. Um, that's definitely a box that I will be buying, despite the fact that there's only one thing in it. Oh no, no, there is more stuff in it that I want. Uh, that is actually a box of stuff that actually fits with everything I own, which is a nice change. Because normally it's kind of these boxes because they split between different crews quite frequently for me is like one half of the box I want the other box is the, the other half is something I won't be using because I don't want to it, own everything. But it's just a predatory tactic to get you stuff for another faction. Then you're just like, oh, well, I've got all this stuff now. I'll just get this now. I already have, have three factions. Oh, now I get this. The table. I oh, need well, I, could, I could get this one now too because oh. Oh, and I'll just get them all. <laughs> and the next thing you know, you're at catch them and... Gotta catch them all. Yeah. So we would continue to do wonderful and wonderful things. All right. TT Combat. Never heard of them. That's oh, strange. We've covered them a few times. All right. Most of the new releases this fortnight have been terrain side. Uh, but quite frankly, I think that... TT Combat started as a terrain company, and I am aware of that, but everything they continue to do terrain-wise just screams quality. Um, Something else, it's not here on the, the, the front page. Um, I, it was an email I got from. Uh, they're starting to do um, um, tufts, like yes. little grass tufts for the bases. Yes, that is true. I, I didn't add that to the run check because I thought it was kind of boring. Sorry, Lewis. Sorry, sorry, Lewis. It's not that I don't love you, but um, other Lewis, not that Lewis. You, you mean Louis? Louis, sorry. Or is it Lewis? What? Oh, I don't know. It's I've heard them say it both ways, <laughs> and, and, well, and so, in so, text it could be said either. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, gra grass tufts are not exciting, is what I was going to say. Well, so so here's my argument of why grass grass tufts are exciting. If you need grass tufts for your terrain on your your bases for your mini, where do you go? Lots of places. The the most common one, uh, as far as you know, web. You, th think of you know the situation where you know if if you don't have access to a store with the, with the stuff, right? Yeah. You're talking a web retailer, right? You know the most common one that's going to pop up readily that you're going to be able to find stuff is the army painter. Okay, so for another grass. company. Yeah, so um, for a company like TT Combat, where, you know, 
Oh, I need to buy the siege tower and the fortress and oh hey, I can add two things of tufts into my card as well and that gets me to the free shipping. The the, ex the free shipping is a big one. I was going to say something more along the lines of if you're ordering stuff for them already, it means that you're not paying postage from somewhere else. Um, going back to the actual topic, though, I think Bourbon Avenue in particular really jumps out at me. Like This is all modern day-ish type era stuff. I really, really like this. this. This terrain could work very well for my secret project that we're not discussing openly at the moment. He says, dropping a massive hint that there's something going on behind the scenes. Um, but for, for the setting of where that is taking place, these buildings work really well. I think anything other than fantasy would work pretty well. True, true. You don't want sci-fi, though. No, not, not the, the way that I've designed it. Yeah, but like, you know, the, 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 the Wild West stuff I got? Dude, that true. would totally rock. Um, I, I really like no, this. Uh, yeah. I don't I mean, know the, which the... one I prefer, but I, I really like Bourbon Avenue. Um, so this is all like, like it's modern day French stuff, but it works. I could see buildings like this in the middle of a US city if it was an older city. Like New Orleans, which is yeah. got Bourbon Street. This is my point. <laughs> uh, I, Rue Le Wagner, that I really like as well. It looks like it's one building until you go to the next picture and realize, oh, it's actually two. So that, that's another one that's very, very versatile. They're doing a lot of really versatile stuff, which is what I like. Yeah, I know for sure. Um, I'm, I'm actually kind of a fan of the stacks. Yes. Both yep. The, uh, yep. The snack stacks and the condo stacks. It's like, it's your little like uh uh Singapore, you know, Hong Kong like mm. side alley kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like it's like terrain for your terrain. Yeah. No, th that's really nice. Um there's the Pitchstone Grand Hotel down there as well, which I don't think we'd seen before. There's stuff further down that we definitely have, but uh, I really like that. And, of course, the boardwalks. This is just Wild West stuff, though. Uh, no, we have discussed that because there's the fortress that we discussed last episode. Yeah. Or episode previous. Um, so, yeah, T2 Combat continue to do wonderful terrain, which is what they started doing <laughs> before they went into all of the games. Who would have thought that they're still doing it? Probably Louis. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear alright Mantic coming up next and they are redoing their Empire of Dust which is totally not Tomb Kings it's definitely not Tomb Kings so you see it says Empire of Dust so therefore it's not Tomb Kings because Tomb Kings don't exist stop saying that it's Tomb Kings uh, no I really like this stuff I actually own the original version of this uh, and the original version was yeah, it was okay. It was rustic, which didn't help. This is all proper hard plastic. Um, I really like these models, honestly. Um, they are so much better than the old ones that are still in the box for me and have almost been thrown in the garbage several times. Uh, I, so, I bought them as a project and never actually got around to doing it because... Yeah. With the exception of the uh, Idol of Shobik and the Dust Monolith. Yeah. It's an undead army. I mean, oh, yes. aesthetically, aesthetically it gets, looks good, but I mean, it's just like... The undead have been, have been overdone to the point of, like, just go let them die. Yeah. Stop, re stop every, reanimating them. Every fantasy <laughs> game needs to have an undead. Uh, they have two. Uh, one is a more general undead, and then this is your Egypt type thing. Um, yeah, like, I, I like I said, I really like this. Uh, you are right. I mean, yes, there there is uh, undead is a trope that has been used so many times. 
Now, if we also want to talk about new stuff that's on this page, the uh, Northern Alliance Fleet Starter. Oh, yeah. I love these boats. These look great. Though, those are some snazzy-looking little uh, ships. Oh, yeah. So this is the most recent release for their Armada. So Kings of War Armada. Because having two games called Armada is not confusing at all. The other one's, no. called, the other one's called Star Wars Armada, so it's totally different. There's also a fleet booster, which has your smaller ships and a few alternate stuff in there. Uh, I don't think we've seen the... I don't think we've seen the Dreadnought equivalent for them yet. Uh, there obviously will be one coming, but we haven't seen it yet. Uh, but yeah, Mantic, Mantic are huge. Let's let's be fair, but they, they have new stuff coming all the time. All right, I want to talk about a couple of Kickstarters. Okay. First one is called Bases and Scenery, which is a really boring name, but it's because it's you know, it's actually literally bases and scenery. So these are 3D prints that you can print off on your 3D printer, who would have guessed, uh, that are literally bases and literally scenics. So we've got a couple of tree stumps here that you can add to a base and then you've got a really good base for forest elves or whatever you want. Uh, there's swamp looking stuff here and beach looking stuff here as well. It's all very, very different. Um, I don't quite understand why tavern has been spelt with a B. I, well, I it's, it's... think maybe they're trying to make it sound like a um, like tavern. I'm guessing that they're trying to copyright stuff. I mean, tavern is not a word that I know of. Well, and if you look um, on your keyboard... What's right next to the V? Yeah, but you normally pick these things up before you go live. Uh, and, I, and, and, and hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Where are they located? Right Spain. next to each other. Well, no, 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 oh. Spain. Oh, okay. okay. So, so I'm gonna give I'm gonna give some benefit of the doubt of English may not be a language this Kickstarter creator has a strong grasp of. <laughs> yeah, that 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 yeah, is. Fair. Uh, so um, I'm gonna now. I'm gonna now that I've gone. I'm talking and I've interrupted you. I'm gonna continue to interrupt the tree stumps. So you got all those little supports and everything, right? Yeah. But then when you put them on the base, you still have a gap from the 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 print and the base. I actually think that there's some blue tech underneath that. By the way. Well, I I think that is a great little effect because then you can like do other basing and have that go into and under. Oh, yes. Okay. Yep. I see what you're coming from. Yeah. I can also see that they've had the same issue printing theirs off that I do when I have bases, uh, which is bases don't tend to print well on resin printers. They tend to warp. Um, what? Really? No. Yeah, it's really no, annoying. I, well, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm being facetious. You know, it's, you're trying to do a large flat object and it's like you know coming out and being cured it's you know yeah and it's usually the curing that does it actually uh i really like this stuff this stuff is really nice and detailed and there's kind of like a little bit of everything I mean, there it's very Go clearly to trying to capture as many different people as it can I mean, yeah it screams dungeons it screams tabletop gaming go um, to the elf palace Elthalus. Oh, Elf nice. Right? There's a yep. couple there where it's like, you know, you got the, the vertical background on the base too. Like, that's... I like the fact that this doesn't scream any one particular... It doesn't scream Lord of the Rings. It doesn't scream Games Workshop. This is very much their own design. I mean, you can make the argument for a few of them that, okay, yeah, well, Castle Ruins all look the same. Forest bases all kind of look the same. That's unique. That's theirs. I really like what they've done there. Mm -hmm. I'll even argue those cave bases are, are pretty unique to what they've done too. Yeah. I'm not throwing shade at them. I'm just saying, like, of all of them, yeah. but that, that's the one that's unique. Uh, the cave bases are the ones that's probably my favorite, quite frankly. Um, I really like those. 
And it looks like uh, while the Kickstarter is still running, there's a chance to unlock Urban, Desert, Volcano, Alien, Factory, Spaceship, Crystal World. I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff that, you know, yeah. th this has planned. And, yeah, and, and it's a fairly reasonable Kickstarter the guy's got here, too. His yeah, I mean, total goal is, is 14 euro. <clears throat> well, and, and, his, and his goal was $510. Well, yes, yeah, so that that is a that is actually a um. Five hundred and ten dollars is was to get it. Th there's a tactic where if you have a lower threshold than what you want, uh, then because when people see that you're funded, they're more likely to um get over the line. There's a risk involved that, that's because fair, yeah. if it's not high enough at the end, then you risk now you don't have enough money to produce it. But but you're looking at a Kickstarter where like ninety percent of your work is already <laughs> done at this point. Like there's yeah the, the it's all this is ready. STL files yeah you, you, the Kickstarter is give me money and I'll give you digital files pretty much yeah like this is the best kind of Kickstarter because there's a chance all the stuff that Selene Sun Lock Urban Desert you know, they're already designed probably um to the point where a later conversation that we're having in game talk I think this is the future of where Kickstarter like guys uh but we'll save that conversation for later. Well, yeah, we'll definitely save that. Um, next one. Yeah. Uh, Warlord have a new box set coming out for Bolt Action, and it's called The Gentleman's War. So this is very clearly, it's a very specific part of history, this one. Um, it's, it's one that they never seem to do. I mean, they never seem to touch anything to do with the World Wars. Constantly, forever, because that's kind of their wheelhouse. Uh, I really like this stuff, though. This is, I mean, it kind of feels Rats of Trebrook ish although that probably doesn't mean much to you. It's the Desert War. Because um, you've got the Africa Corps there as well. So it's, very... it's fine. We're good. Uh, okay. Sam was leaning on something and it fell. Uh, so this is a nice-looking Kickstarter. I mean, not, not a Kickstarter. This is a nice looking box set. It's it's an easy buy in. Uh, I don't have a price on here at this stage, but you've got some really nice looking German troops there, and they do look really nice. There's some really nice looking Allied troops there. Uh, it kind of feels a little generic ish, but then it's like there's so much World War Two stuff out there at the moment. It's hard not to have it feel that way. I, I, I was gonna say though, it's like. Oh look, another World War Two game. No, Bolt mm. Action has been a, Bolt, Bolt Action is not new. This is just I, a new starter set. I, I get that. I'm just saying, like you know, there's yeah. so much of That's it why out I made there. The joke to start with. I mean, Warlord is so un it's so unusual for them to do a World War Two thing. Yeah, I I do like this box set though, as much as I'm throwing jokes out there. All right, and our last news topic of the day, WoW Buildings also have a Kickstarter here. And, yeah, yeah, this stuff's really pretty. So this is a 3D print as well. So this is another one where, like, all of your work's already done. There's not really a lot in the way of risk on this. It's just, well, unless they don't send it to you. But like, all of the, the work is already done. It's all here being displayed. Uh, it's just a matter of, hey, you need the time to print it now. This stuff is incredible. I just, I'm just scrolling through picture after picture at this stage. It all works in the modern day. Uh, you could easily throw this back and say that it's 80s and 70s even. It all feels, it's generic enough that it could fit anywhere, but it's also specific to some extent as well. It definitely has a modern feel. I like the garage in particular. As much as, yay, it's a garage. Um, I mean, all of this is stuff that you could go, yay, how exciting. This is just normal locations. And it's like, yes, that's why this is good. People have to spend so much time trying to come up with all of the sci-fi and fantasy stuff that, to some extent, modern day kind of gets ignored. I mean, there are yeah. a few companies out there doing modern day buildings. Uh, Knights of Dice come to mind. Um, the L Factory block looks amazing. Have you uh, scrolled past the single chimney factory yet? The L one? Uh, no, it's it's called single chimney factory. 
Um, I don't think so. It's about a little more than halfway down. I mustn't be there yet. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, um, no, I like that. That is... That is premium right there. That is worth a 25-pound pledge just to get that STL. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's the other thing. This is a 25-pound pledge. Like, this is very affordable. I mean, it's saying that, look, the, the 3D print stuff should be affordable. Um, it, it's... That there's a certain market for this, and big money is not that market because you're not you're not. Oh, go to the test platform a little further down. I just saw it. Yeah, that's kind of fun. I like that. Oh god, even the warehouse. It's just a warehouse. Yeah. Uh, the one thing I will say is they don't really have anything on here that shows you how these things pull apart, uh, because you're not going to be able to print this stuff without breaking oh, it down into sections. You're going to have to break it down. You're going to need a resin printer to the size of my desk to do that in one piece. <laughs> um, they do say that you can shrink this down to six mil, which is insane. Um... And oh, and obviously at that size, yes, it'll fit very easily. So Bruce. hey, bot war crew, Bruce. this is easy terrain. Yep, raised train track, literally on the screen right now. Yep, yeah, like scale that down to ten mil, print out about seventy of those, and then drop zone. <gasps> They've got a JCB uh, backhoe. <laughs> And they've actually used that one as an example of how well it shrinks down, which is nice. Like th this is all like, like I said, it's it's all very simple, straightforward stuff that you would see every day. And most of this sort of stuff is things that most countries will have. Um, not all, most. Um, uh, and it because most of this is fairly universal design. I mean, I've just gone back up to the large office building. It just looks like a building from the city. It doesn't look like well, a modern was... day building. It looks like something that you would have seen that was modern in the 80s. So, so that, to me, right there, has a very, like, eastern block. Yes. Like, look and feel to it. Uh, the, this factory that I had you go down to, uh, you, I would argue you could go back as far as, like, the 1880s. Yeah, with a, that trade, as far as like sort of stuff, I mean, modern day buildings now have a very modern aesthetic, but it's still like it's that modern day office building look really is newish. It's like the last decade, fifteen years or so. I like how timeless most of this feels. But like, a lot of this stuff have like complete and ruined versions. Uh, this is again. Stuff that would work really well for my secret project, like that. That you should just, back this. It's just it's a city that's just screaming to be built on a three by three. Yeah, table. you 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 should back this and then get the STLs and then you'll have it for for your secret project. Certainly a possibility. Um, <laughs> I really like this. Stuff. Shut up, George. Shut up, George. Shut up. Shut up. Yes, because <laughs> because me teasing that that is not deliberate at all. Uh, I just want to say the L factory block. The L factory. I'm talking about block, you spending money. Oh right. <laughs> the L factory block to me kind of has a prison feel to it. That yeah, that's very Eastern block feeling too. It feels like, like a prison. To, if you was to remove that, the the actual chimney, I would say this is jail. I don't know. That's just my thought. Indie. Definition. Independent. Type. Slang word. Jargon. All right. Mana Press are an Australian publisher. Uh, they actually have a couple of games out there that have all been out there for quite a while. Tribal is exactly the sort of game that you think that it is. Uh, it's Tribal Warfare. Um, 
so on the cover of this particular one, you've got like a Maori warrior. Uh, so rules for this are uh, it's all like tribal native peoples fighting against each other. Um, I really, really like what these are doing. Uh, the other game that they do is called Maximilian. This actually got pointed out to me fairly recently. This is like a pulp. Well, that, they describe it as pulp action road rage. And George, three guesses without going into the subject why this got brought up to me recently. Uh, your secret project. It's basically my secret project. Well, it, it has a feel like my secret project. It's It's not the same thing. It definitely goes... So this kind of... It has a Mad Max feel to it from from the way that they're describing it. Um, in the shop, one thing in particular that they've got, which is the reason it was shown to me, um, in the shop, they have Maximilian 1934 movement template. And basically, this is how they deal with your turning mechanics in the game. So there's a template that goes together and straight is green which is very easy and then you can turn it a certain distance into a red and it shows you how difficult the turn is from a mechanics point of view uh it's the most unique turning template i've seen oh, i kind of really like it that's a really clever idea um james the gentleman that was showing me this was talking about it. It's like it's my favorite movement mechanic I, I've ever seen, and I can't disagree with him. I think this is genius, quite frankly. Um, so yeah, it, it's nineteen thirties road war. So it, it's kind of I don't really know if there's a video game equivalent, but it, it kind of screams, like I said earlier, it kind of screams Mad Max to me. I was going to say, this kind of looks like um, the birth of Formula One almost. Like the, the look yeah. and feel of those cars. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Yep. Because, I mean, you've got the, the big engine with, like, the, the minimalist body and, you know, passenger compartment of, here's a big engine and we can get this to go really fast. You'll die, most likely, but you'll go fast, which yeah. that's what people cared about back then was, you know... Loud noises, cars going fast, and people dying. Yeah. So, yeah, they've got a number of different games. Tribal is the first one that I brought up, and this is a game that I've genuinely been tempted to try. Uh, a few, oh, what, about 18 months ago now, there was a video, like one of the first major videos I did uh, was a group of Aboriginal warriors, and this is one of the things that I considered doing with these, with those. Um, uh, because it was just something that screamed an excuse for me to paint up some Australian Aboriginal minis. Um, you've also got Primeval, which goes back... Uh, it's essentially the same rule set, but it goes back into prehistoric times, so it's all cavemen and stuff. Uh, but otherwise, it's kind of... The, it's just a different version of the same idea. It uses card mechanics rather than dice. You can actually download, like, free assets for the game which we're not looking at today um but the one that i hadn't really looked at is brutal which again kind of uses the same same sort of rule set but this one is street gangs thugs and law enforcement so this is mafia type like th this is your your 1800s criminal underworld type stuff so or early 1900s sorry um these guys are doing some really nice looking stuff uh like when it comes to indies i don't think you can get much more indie than a small publishing company that do their own games uh this is like i said this just screams indie um all of this is uh, all of this is um, miniatures agnostic, so you can kind of use whatever you want. Uh, it doesn't really matter uh, from that point of view. But Matter Press, 
honestly, I think it's a company that's worth worth having a closer look at. Without turning the audio on to to figure out what's going on, I'm already in love with the idea of the deck of playing cards mechanic yes. for the game. Yeah, because I mean that's just call your opponent out for cheating, give them a brand new deck of cards, right? Yeah, I mean that's what happens in Vegas. You know, it's just like after so long, it's like you know new decks brought out so that there's no marking and no wear and stuff like that. So you know. I love the fact that the cards are also being used as the movement templates as well. Right. That's really cool. It's just... Yeah, like I said, was that... that's, that's just really clever. And also, yeah. you know, it guarantees companies like Bicycle will continue to stay in business. Yeah. Yep. I, I really like what they're doing here. It, it's It's a very unique miniatures game uh and it's things like this that make you look at things and go why has nobody thought of this now don't get me wrong this is not new this has been around for a while um but i don't think i've seen a standard deck of cards be used in a way that was this this unique feeling yeah I mean, it, it, it's one of those things, too. It's like, you know, the D6, right? It is the most common dice out there. Unfortunately, you know, yes. Um, for, yeah, for you, yes. Um, you know, the, the, I, I'm, I'm actually shocked that I've never, you know, like remotely even thought of the idea of, like, you know, a company out there using just a regular, you know, 52-card deck as a game mechanic. Yeah, th- th- there have been a few companies that have done it. Um, Vulsong? used a deck of a regular deck of cards as well but i don't know exactly how the deck worked in the game uh i i certainly don't think it was quite this unique because they were still using um like a measuring stick and stuff so um black suits are strike cards they cause wounds if the weapon matches the suit so if you draw a spade then spades do damage. If you do clubs, it's 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 really really well thought out. I really like it. Now, now that being said, I would not play a game, you know, using this mechanic against people. Say like I don't know, Penn and Teller. <laughs> <laughs> Penn and Teller don't need cards to trick you. <clears throat> no, I'm I'm just talking about their sheer, sheer ability to like. Shuffle and stack a deck. Yeah, right in front of you, and you can't see them do it. And then they'll just be like, "I do this." Okay, I've just you know, you're dead. I- I'm upset because... that I didn't actually go to see- <laughs> Penn and Teller. Actually, were performing in Australia recently, and they came to Melbourne, and I didn't get to go and see them because I didn't have the money for it at the time. They have never been to this country before. Well, maybe maybe they wanted to go on vacation. They're like, "Hey, if we do a show there, it's a write off." <laughs> um all right so that's our news that's our indie for the day uh let's discuss some hobby dream blue prime paint i have done a squat i got some shelf brackets in to make shelves to put all of these on shelves over there and I built one shelf, and I put it on the wall, and I started filling up the shelf, and I was just like, nope. <laughs> I glued two pieces of wood together last weekend. It's not a table yet, but I have two pieces of wood glued together. <laughs> um, I have been working on a project to build an actual proper gaming table. Uh, this is not entirely secret at this point. Um, I have been planning it for a while. I started this last weekend because basically the question was because I don't have all of the tools that via rights I need to do it. So I was like, well, can I get around that? Uh, I glued two pieces of wood together just to see how the lamination worked. And the lamination worked really well, but I have immediately seen that, no, I I do need a table saw if I'm going to finish this. So that project is on pause for the moment, which is fine because like I have the, well, I have, the first mm-hmm. half of the wood that I need. I still I will have to basically buy the same 
amount again, pretty much. Might I suggest something to you? Buying a table saw? Uh, no, a track saw. That is, yeah, that, that, that is another thought that I had given. It, 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 it's even simplified even more, because I, I, you know, I've seen some people do this on a... I saw this guy build, like, a box for his, like, little Transit Connect van. It was, like, a camping box so he could sleep and store stuff and everything. His track saw was quite literally a piece of Melmain board. I think that's the word you guys use? The no, plastic like, cover yeah. boards? Yeah. Yeah. It was literally that, and he just made sure it was clamped down at a 90 degree with, you know, a square and stuff like that. Yeah. And then he ran his uh, just his circular saw along like that. And that was his track saw. Which, yeah, if you do it right, too, a, tra a track saw can do 80% of the work a table saw can do. If you start getting into, like, angle cuts and stuff like that, or start doing dados, which those are illegal in Europe, or... Um, uh, like start doing. I don't know if they are. I think it's that they just don't sell them. Because we do have them here, and they're no. stupid uh, expensive. Um, no, I that, that I look. Dado stacks are illegal in Europe because you have to remove the guard from your table saw, and oh, therefore you cannot is? legally sell them. Yep, yeah, yeah, that's the issue. That's because when you're using a dado stack, you're not cutting the board; you're cutting a groove in the board. Yeah. And so when you're doing the groove, you can't have the guard on because you're not cutting through the wood. You're leaving some of it intact. So in Europe, dado stacks are illegal. Um, I'd recommend uh, trying to trying to go the, the track saw route because, well, then you don't have to have a table saw taking up space. Well, here's the problem with that. Most of the, so, most of the stuff I'm using is 90 mil width thick. It's thinner than the track will sit on. How, how thick is it? 90 mil, so four inches ish. So the track would just fall off. You're not going to be able to get the track to sit on it. Yeah, you will. Because you put the track on the wood. Yep. You clamp it down onto the wood. And then you have, and, about, then, you and then you have about that much of circular sort of add on top of it as well. No, 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 no. You just put it. No, no. You just put it down and you run the saw next to it. Yeah, so the track is so the, about, the track is thicker than the board is already, right? So I here's your I, board. I, yep. Here's the track, and then you run the saw like this. Yep, but I want to go the other way. Oh, you want to go through it this way? Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, I don't just do use my circular saw now. So I, I yeah, will, don't do. I will need to buy just get a thinner wood. table saw. Well, just I get have the, access to a table saw. It's just not here. So, um. You'll have to show me what you're doing, because I could probably, uh, uh figure, I don't know. There, there, there's probably ways around it where you don't need to do a table saw. Table saws are nice, but they're not needed all the time, so. I, I, won't, um, need, I won't need to buy one. I just need to get access to one. Yeah. Um, um, so, yeah. Otherwise, this week in particular, well, the, the last three weeks in particular, there's been a lot of time of mine that's gone into the, the secret project. Our Patreon knows what the secret project is uh there is a channel on the discord that is exclusively available to them and to us uh my friends in real life know what that secret project is um do you have friends i do i have i have a number of friends they cost me a lot of money <laughs> so I, I, I live in an area where people exist so i don't have to worry about that i know you don't understand what people are it's it's what you are, but more of them. I am wearing a, a skin suit. I am actually a lizard person. <laughs> so, yeah, look, th there's been a project that I've wanted to do for eight or nine years at this point, and it's been something I've wanted to do. I've had a very specific picture in my head of how it would work, and I'm getting that into an actual document to try to... Because I want to get that project to be within a state that I can test within the next 12 months. Um, and while I'm motivated to write at this stage, I'm trying to get as much down as I can. Because I do know that I will get to a point where it's like, uh, I need a break, and, and I'll, I will do that, and, which is why I've said I want 12 months. Um, it, it's certainly, it's, it's not what it's going to be yet, but it's getting there. Faster than I thought it was going to, actually. I've been putting this off for way too long. 
So I, I'm being kind of vague. I've probably made it clear what I'm talking about if you really want to think about it. But um, come and check us out on Patreon if you'd be curious as to what I'm Become doing. a supporter and find out. Yeah, it's only $2 a month. <laughs> Talk nerdy to me. When we very first started, Game Talk was a thing where we were kind of doing opinion pieces and stuff, and or we were kind of also using it to discuss when we had played games. Uh, we moved across to Or specific... about games. Yes. Because, you know, covering the TT stuff, which, you know, that's, that's where we started. Saying. So, yeah. So we are kind of returning to its initial plan at this stage for an we're going to kind of discuss a continuation of a story we covered in the news last fortnight. So last fortnight we kind of discussed the cyberpunk Kickstarter that wasn't really doing very well. Um, well, l l let me pause you there real quick too, Bruce, because we can also go back further to a uh, zombie side Marvel zombies yeah, as well, because that was part of this. What is going to be this discussion tonight? Yeah. So... Um, we'll go ahead and include that as well. Yeah. So Cyberpunk 2077 wasn't doing very well when we covered it. Uh, it, it, it ended up getting 866,000, which is not terrible. It's certainly not what Simon are used to. Um, basically with the current shipping crisis, the way that it is, um, there are prices for shipping that the audience are very clearly not being willing to pay. But there's also another side to this. Um, and it's not just CMON. Like, and I'm making this This is an industry thing. And when we discussed this last fortnight, I kind of suggested that I kind of feel like this is like board games and like big board games and the likes are going to have to find a new way of getting out there because I don't think the Kickstarter mm -hmm. is going to be that. At least it can't be unless... Until the shipping crisis goes away, I don't think that it can be. Uh, but so it was about well, two or three well, days after that that this next article got dropped, I believe? No, about a week um, later. Uh, it, was, it was about a week and a half later because I linked it to you guys on Wednesday? Yeah. It was Wednesday. It is Wednesday. Do you know why it's Wednesday? It was Wednesday when I sent this to you guys. Oh, because it's always Wednesday for Mythic. Yeah. Because it is always Wednesday for Mythic. Yeah. So, um, the reason I'm talking about this initially is because I'm, I'm just going to openly call you on this, George, because, I, like I said in our private discussion, I feel it's important to do this. George has very strong opinions on this, and those opinions will be coming out. Um, because George is one of the backers for this project, and he feels that this well, is taking advantage of their backers. I, I'm not a backer of this project that broke the news. I'm backer of another project. Oh, that's infected. That, that's affected by. Sorry. Well, that has not been affected yet, but but will be if it is affected. Here's my surprised face. Yeah. So. They, like Simon, have had to go back to their Kickstarter and say, hey, we're going to need to increase the costs of our shipping. The problem in this particular case is shipping has already been taken. But because of all of the delays to the project, shipping has, as we know, and this is not opinion, this is fact, shipping costs at the moment have doubled, tripled in some cases quite significant this is not a matter of um well it's our opinion that uh, this is actual fact it has done that and because this project has been delayed for an insane amount of time uh backers are now being asked to pay extra for shipping for a product that's already ready to ship um they do kind of touch on that if you don't have the funds to be able to do it at this stage they will hold on to your product for as long as they can um, but they basically that they, they they are saying we have no choice in the matter. Um, they've subsidised apparently over one and a half, one point two million dollars in postage, and they can't continue to do it. Like none of this should really be surprising. It's the fact that um, I'm going to quote you, George. 
they're holding the product hostage. And the reason I'm saying I'm quoting George is personally, I don't think it's quite as black and white as that, though I understand why people have that opinion. Um, well, the, the problem here's is, why I use that word. The, the, the pap- I think the problem is the shipping crisis is not going to be here forever. It's a current problem, and, and it is a problem. Uh, it will eventually pass, but I think we're at least 12 months away from that. And this so, project is already 12 months, 18 months late. Uh, not quite, not quite. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in here and clarify a few things. Um, uh, my train of thought uh, went out the window. Um, so they are holding the game hostage because they said, it's ready to ship, yeah. but we want more money from you to ship it. Yeah. Because what you've already paid for shipping, it's not going to work now. This is for a project that they projected delivery in November of 21. So here we are, July of 22. So uh, quite late, almost yeah. a full year late. We're, at, what, nine months late now? Um, August, September, October, November. So um, the, pro- the problem it, is, is that if they had a... Uh, we do realize no, no. that not everything in a delay is controllable, but some of it is. Um, and if it hadn't have been this late they wouldn't be having to ask for funds. Absolutely. If if they had even delivered, uh, call it February this year, shipping wasn't crazy come February. It's only within the last three, four months where shipping has really just gotten yeah. stupid. Um, so the the other game that, that I am now concerned about is Hell of the Last Saga. Yes. This Kickstarter was before Darkest Dungeon. This Kickstarter closed before Darkest Dungeon even was announced on Kickstarter. All the funding has been collected. Um, I, I have a countdown timer because I am so uh, salty about this. Yes. Uh, based off of estimated delivery date, Hell is currently 388 days past due. And that's being generous saying, when they said this month of this year, I gave them to the end of the month, not the beginning. So I gave them an extra 30 days on that delivery. So here we are getting, we're knocking on the door of 400 days overdue. That's a big round number of what the heck. And a large I've part hit- of that delay is because they hadn't finished the rule set, which, and a, it, which was supposed to have been finished when the Kickstarter was launched. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me see here. Re- I rewrites have is not unusual. Rewrites happen. But, no, the, it, it, if you look at yeah. their weekly or w- their Wednesday updates, they were showing a chart of, hey, here we're at in, in, in developing of the game. Yeah. that's You're that's still developing the game. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, here's, and, and, here's and, the, and, yeah, sorry, keep going. And, and uh, here's another reason why I'm, I'm super, super salty with Mythic at this point is because, you know, one, uh, they're now holding games hostage. Two, a game that I have paid for as far, and I know Kickstarter's done a store, but when you're as big as Mythic, if they say, back this project and we'll send you this, they had better send the project because I've got a game up here that I did the same thing. It's there. Mm-hmm. Uh, second part of that, they said, hey, back this and we'll send you this stuff. I had to literally get on my computer and email and say, hey, where's mine at? I don't have it. And they're like, oh, we're sorry about that. Yeah, we'll get that sent out. That month later. Was, yeah, and how many times did you have to reach out to them to get that email response? Yeah, it was, so, I mean, it's r- right off the back. And, um, you know, it, I, I'm having to put in more effort than I should have for something that I have paid for. If I've paid for something and it's shipping to other people, it's shipped to you, right? You got a copy. I still have Why do you, you still why, don't have yours, why, no. No, no, I, I finally got it. I finally got it. But I literally got it like, when did you get yours? Because I got mine like last month. I got month. mine like a month before you, maybe a month and a half before yeah. you. Did you have to email them? Did you say, hey, where's my pledge? I was a late, no. I was a late pledge too. What? You were a late pledger and you got yours before me? This is where I'm, I'm getting super salty with, with Mythic. Yeah. Because 
I pledged for stuff, I paid for stuff, it's not showing up. Now, stuff, they're saying, hey, it's ready to ship, but you need to give us more money to ship. Yep. Here's a game that, you know, I'm now, like, you know, a year on, like, and the community is starting to get, like, are we ever actually going to see this game now? Mm. And with the financial issues that, you know, Mythic was talking about in this uh, Darkest Dungeon update of, we need more money, this is also following, you know, they've let people go. They, they, they have terminated staff. There was a, another game that I, I, was, I was looking at, I was like, this is kind of interesting. They're going to let me full on late back it without even having done anything on the pledge. I might do that. And then I'm having to email them about other stuff and everything. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to pass on that. And after seeing this update about Darkest Dungeon, I am super glad that I have passed on that. Because now, now things are really getting to the point of wh when, is, when is it going to happen? Because I have a feeling it is going to happen with Mythic. When are they going to do something? People are going to back it. And then it's you know like secret weapon, it nothing happen comes of it. Yeah, we have opinions on secret weapon. <laughs> so well, I mean, that, that's the most re why I threw that out there because that's the most reason of that, that's we've the one that money... I've been trying to avoid giving opinions on. Yeah. Well, and, and my only reason for bringing that up is you've put money towards it. You're not going to see anything from it. Oh, not and, only when I not see anything from it. Um, the guy is openly lying about the reasons for yeah. it. And I'm just... But, but that's my reason for using this is, that as, as, this as is the example is... Here. Yeah. Because this is not just a thing about Mythic either. Uh, as much as, look, like I said, George has strong opinions here. And that's for I'm not, I'm not calling George on having those opinions. I'm just trying to give a balanced opinion piece. And this is an opinion piece. Here's the problem. Kickstarter has been a questionable thing for the industry for a while. There's been a lot of loud voices that have been kind of suggesting that there were companies out there, and I'm not calling ourselves a loud voice because Lord knows I've given Simon crap more than once for their reliance on Kickstarter and their exploitation of Kickstarter. Um, but hey, Simon have always delivered, and I've never suggested that I've never suggested that they didn't. Uh, they have very much slapped their community in the face a few times by releasing a product and then immediately saying that the product isn't viable um, before backers even receive it. Like, like they, they, they release cards for, I don't remember what the game was now, um, and those cards were very expensive replacements for the old ones that weren't usable in the game anymore. And before the backers even received those new cards, they were not usable in the game anymore because they got replaced pretty much immediately. Um, but I think we've come to a point now where it's not just a matter of opinion wise as to whether kickstarter is an appropriate platform for these things the audience is making their voices heard by refusing to back things kickstarter is the biggest kick sorry um simon is the biggest company on kickstarter and have been for a long time and how many voices did we see telling them that they would not give them money but that eight hundred thousand dollars they scratched and clawed to barely get there when we covered it a week earlier it was three or four hundred or no it was like two weeks earlier it was like three or four hundred or something it was a rather short campaign but there was questions as to whether that unlock anything there at one point um, yeah they the, like their stuff usually funds within the first hour they well, took and like this had done that as well. Four days to get past there, or something. This is off the top yeah. of my head. I don't know exactly how yeah, long yeah. it was, but it was very unusual. Um. So, 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 and typically with the Simon stuff that I've seen in the past, you know, they're usually getting what they want plus a zero. So, in the case of Cyberpunk, you know, they wanted a hundred thousand. Typically, on the other ones where they've done this, they've gotten a million. Yeah. You know, like they've they've well and surpassed. Um, for for this one, the fall is short as it did, because 
let's be honest. It was, um, the, po- it was the posters that did it. They were called on it. Yeah. Uh, and, and so I'm not so look at this cyberpunk game. I'm not specifically saying that the prices that they were asking for was unfair, uh, because I don't even really feel like it's relevant at this point. Um, but and and as much as like, as much as the darkest dungeon thing is getting a lot of hate right now, um, even from George. I want to acknowledge that like the shipping crisis is a real thing. And it is certainly a possibility that Mythic, in this case, have no choice. Make no mistake. A company as big as Mythic, under, like, they know that this news is going to get them abuse. Like, they know that. Nobody is that dense. There's no way they didn't know the fallback that was going to come from this. And they still did it. That should hold a lot of weight here. But the problem is, I mean, George used the case of holding a product hostage. So I used the phrase holding a product hostage. Kickstarter is a platform that's been abused by certain companies for too long. But I think we're reaching a point where it's not even a viable, like Kickstarter itself is not viable at this point. Um, It's been a question of whether it was an appropriate business platform for a long time. And I don't think that conversation is even really relevant anymore. Um, When it comes to big box mini games, I seriously question any business that's going to be going on to Kickstarter to try to do it right now because it's just not a platform that's going to be viable much longer. Um, I think the entire industry needs to take a very serious look about how they're using crowdfunding because I think crowdfunding from at least this point on, I think it's done. For, for, it's, for big box games. I'm not saying Kickstarter's dead. Kickstarter is obviously not dead. Yeah, oh, no, no, well no, 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 no. No, it's, for it's big not box stuff, like, And it's not just like, I'm talking specifically our, our industry, but people are not willing to pay for those sort of Kickstarters when they're expecting to get insane discounts. Now, to be fair, the big companies in there getting these insane discounts is a different problem again because Kickstarter is supposed to be for for the little company to actually get funding that they couldn't have gotten otherwise. It, it sure, sure, yeah. Being that a long time ago. Yeah. So, so, and I'm going to throw this out here, right? So, Cyberpunk, right? Did it perform well? So, right. and here, and here's the reason why. It was a hundred and ten dollars for the Edge Runner pledge. That was the basic pledge that gives you the core game plus the stretch goals, right? Yeah. Yep. They wanted. I'm scrolling quickly here. I want to say scroll 38. too quickly. Bucks. No, no, fifty to sixty dollars to ship to the U.S. That's right. Yep. So a hundred ten dollar game. Divide that by two, and that's how much they want to ship it. But but that's the upfront cost. They're saying this is what we need to charge. Yep. I'm okay with that because they're saying this is what I have to charge. For, for them to like, and, and even um, I went through a screen screenshot of this, so I'm going to pull some of this up. Uh, and this is from when was it? Uh, I mean this 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 was a fair while ago. Oh wait, no, that's someone's comment. Well, um, in the initial in the initial darkest dungeon, the initial quote. And obviously, yes, I realize that this price is no longer relevant. We have already acknowledged that the shipping crisis is real. But their initial core pledge was $34. Yep, Uh, for the shipping. In the article where they're talking about having to ask for more money, they used an example of asking for a further 18. But 
my understanding is that this price is not what they charge for shipping in the pledge either. There was a little bit more on top of that. I don't yeah, think it, it, was it was as it... bad as the Seamon one, though. What was the Seamon project where um, everybody turned on them because it was double what they'd quoted? Do you remember what project uh, that was? Because we haven't so, so... touched on that either. Uh, so the, the only other one that I remember talking about with Simon was the, uh, uh, zombie side, uh, Marvel. Maybe it was the Marvel one. Because there's the Galacticus mini. That's not yes. a mini because yes. he's like, yeah, he's like, you know, it's his own separate box. It's like 20 by 20 by 24. Yeah. You ship a box that big internationally, it's going to cost a lot of money. So when you yeah. have a pledge box that's that size, plus an additional box that's that size with just for one mini, yeah, the shipping is going to be expensive on that. Doesn't matter what you do. Okay. Um, so update 90, where Mythic said, and this is for Hell, the last saga of the game that I've backed and I'm waiting for that I'm getting nervous on because they said, you know, on update 90, we're not going to ask for more in shipping. They did that with Darkest Dungeon too. And now they're saying you need to pay us more for shipping. Yeah. Update 90, when they said, yeah, we see shipping prices are going up. We're not concerned. We're not going to ask for more. This isn't going to be an issue. That was September 1st of 21. Yeah. So there was already a trend of this is costing more. And they already, they, they already made the decision of like, no, nah, we're not going to worry about that. We're, we're not going to. If they addressed it back then and be like, hey, this is happening, when it started happening, here's probably the, would it be near the... Here's the thing with Kickstarter. If you want to have a good, rep, a, a good rapport with the people that have given you their money, and these people have given you their money to fund a project that you wanted to do, like, you, you you can treat them like customers all you like, but if you don't respectfully, like, if you're not grateful in the way that you do your business, it won't come across well. Now, I'm not saying this is deliberate, but communication is the key here. And whilst it's all well and good to say, no, I don't think it's going to be a problem, Being in denial about it is not smart. Now, don't get I, we are not a business. We don't have to deal with postage. We don't even have merch as much as I would love to get. I would love to get things like this done. Um, like we don't have an income stream like that where we we have to deal with this. But we buy product all the time. Um, like if you know. If I know that the shipping prices for things are going up, and I don't think that it's going to affect me, if I'm a smart person, I will still warn the community as far in advance as I possibly can that this might be an issue that we need to deal with. At the, at the time of writing, we don't feel that this is a problem. But if it does become a problem, we will let you know as soon as possible. That's all they needed to change is just acknowledging that it could have been a problem, even if they don't feel that it is right now. Right. And then that conversation and, and, is completely different. And and then, you know, then you turn around like, okay, so the game's done, the game's ready to ship, but now you need to pay us more money. Yep. No worrying. That, that's where, you know, they caught a lot of their flack and, there are several it's comments where on it. Got their flag as well because Simon didn't talk about it until it happened. Yep. Like, they launched their pledge manager, and then everybody went, "What on earth is this? This isn't what you told us." And and they yeah. hadn't communicated it until it went live. Um, and there's no reason why they couldn't have. Yeah. Not, not every um, not every update needs to be three pages long. In fact, probably better if you don't. When it comes to... I quite like the way that Mythic do their um, updates, where they have a weekly thing 
And because there's not always something to talk about, they'll kind of talk about all of their other stuff as well to try to balance and have a reason for it. Because that way it feels like you're including the audience. Well, I, I prefer that because you're being open and actually talking about this stuff. And by actually stopping and taking the time, even if it's once a month on Wednesday, and that was the you know that is the great thing about Mythic is you know on Wednesday you can typically expect an email in your inbox with an update about their stuff. Mm. That's that's the one thing that they are really good on. And if it's once once every week, every two weeks, once a month, there's an update for it. And then for just out of the blue to just be like, hey, cool, this game's ready to go. We need more to ship it because this is happening. Yeah, we addressed it a year ago, but we didn't take it seriously. So now we have yeah. to do this. Now, you touched on a similar but different problem when you mentioned. Um, and, and you know that I was trying to avoid talking about this, but you've gone there, so I'm going there now. Well, 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 I, I, I was only throwing it out. I, I was only throwing it out there as as a as, as an example. We 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 don't need to talk about it in the the fact of what what has happened with that. We know it's a failed Kickstarter. Money was given to a Kickstarter. Money money was received by an individual, and nothing was delivered. Um, well, it, here, here's why I'm going to go there because there is some similarities, uh, but for different reasons. So these guys have acknowledged that there was a problem, uh, but not soon enough. Let, 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 let's be fair. Yeah. Right? They, they should have been open about this and that this was coming as soon as they possibly could have. Now, maybe they have done that. It doesn't feel like they have, but maybe they have. Secret Weapon went well, so silent here, 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 for months. Here, here Bruce. Here, here, here's what Secret Weapon has. See what it is? It's nothing. Yes. It's worse. Right. Here, yeah. here. Do you want this? Do you want this, Bruce? You've paid for it. Do you want it? I would love to okay. have that. Okay, I want more money now. <laughs> yes. that's, that's the difference. Yes. That, that's why I am very salty as, as the fact of... Th this is a business. I, 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 tried, I tried looking this up before we started this episode. I tried to look to see how much money... You know, well, not much money. What is the value of Mythic game? Yeah, yeah. Good because let's be honest. Right? Because let's be honest, right? Okay, hell, the last saga, right? Uh, I don't, the I game don't I think they're a publicly traded company. Uh, I could be wrong. Two point two point two million they received on that. Mm. Uh, Darkest Dungeon. Oh wait, oh I've got the whole list here. Uh, Siege Six. That's their first person shooter, right? Uh, one and a half million. Um, Darkest Dungeon, here we go. 5.6 million. Yeah. Okay. Where's the money going? 5, 5. 5.6 million, just under 30,000 backers. And that doesn't take into account what came from the pledge manager as well. No, no that's, yeah, that's not even add-ons. You know, people that only pledged a dollar and then picked it up later. God yeah. knows how many times I've done that. Um, yeah. And th let's this see. Is uh, the oh, where was that other one we talked about? Monster Apocalypse. That was 1.32. So right now, just within the last two years, we're looking at $10 million of income. Mm. I understand. They have to spend money on the manufacturer to make boxes, to yeah, make yeah, the yeah. board game, to make the miniatures, all that stuff and everything. But if you're still looking at 75% of that cost going into making that game, guess what you have left? You've still got a couple million left over. Oh, and, and oh make, also, make no mistake, also, all of these things have profit built into them. Does it have also, enough profit built in to cover the postage difference? There's no way for us to know that, but... Also, Bruce, Bruce, that $5.6 million for Darkest Dungeon... That was for Darkest Dungeon, because what happens when the Pledge Manager opens? You go to the Pledge Manager, and you pay your shipping. Yes. So $5.6 for Darkest Dungeon. Then they collected shipping afterwards. 
And I, I did a rough guesstimate of, you know, they collected at least like 1.6 million shipping approximately if everyone did an all in and yeah. you're looking at 50 bucks, approximately 1.6 million. Okay, so now this Kickstarter is sitting at a cool uh, five, uh, nice. seven, seven point two million. At a modest estimate. So it, it brings in a lot of question and concern of, you know, what's happening? You know, are, is, is there an office building like Google where they've got like, you know, the fancy chairs, you know, that people can go get a massage in or what? I mean, like, you know, what's going on? You know, I understand you're in the business of making money, but, you know, if you're mismanaging your funds, too, to where you have to stop and say, I need more from people that have already paid something, um, that's a huge problem. Uh, if, if you do that with, you know, companies like, say, Tesla, uh, Apple, and stuff like that, where you turn around shareholders like, hey, we need you to, you know, dump in some more money on this, they're going to look at you and be like, but you're already pulling in this kind of money. Why do you need more money from us? Yeah. So, yeah. Look, th yeah, look, I think we've kind of talked through this in circles at this stage. I oh, yeah. And, and again, this is not just a mythic thing. This is not just a Simon thing. Uh, and as much as there has been, because I'm sorry, that there has been shade thrown in that direction, um, we do acknowledge that not all of this is going to be within their control, but there is certainly some questions here that I think is some, I think it's kind of fair. And hey, look, at least there's a, at least there's a product that exists, and they're not just turning around and and they're not just turning around and trying to blame this random company over here for all of the problems that they tried to solve uh, that they actually caused. That's that that's actually fair. Um, when there's evidence, like, when there's evidence to I, show where some of that money went, and none of it was towards the product. Yeah, and I and I've tried to be very. Um, not Ooh. delivering an entire turd burger about this, but <laughs> to, to be fair, uh, I, I, tr I we discussed this beforehand because it was going to be a lot louder otherwise. So, um, I, I, I jokingly sent a message to the to the guys uh, when I when I first caught this article, you know, like this was happening, and and I said tonight's episode might be not safe for work <laughs> with an explicit tag. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, George, upcoming events. Actually, we're going to finish up on one thing um, to, to prove that, you know, maybe that this isn't a complete, you know, um, issue type thing either. Um, a recent game, uh, Platypus Industries, Drop Bears, right? Yes. N not the same level of game. There, there is some miniatures in it. The Drop Bears are miniatures. Yeah, but it is much the smaller. The, that is the, why the I specifically call that big box games. Okay. So... Now, and I threw a dollar at this to get to the pledge manager because, you know, this game is going to be super cheap for me, you know, in the grand scheme of things, because all his prices are listed in Australian dollars, which that's a lot of Australian dollars to US dollars. So for that price, I would be happy to buy this game. And here's the, here's the great part about this. Where is it at? Oh, the, I'm on the wrong part about it. And this is why I'm also very salty at companies like Mythic who are huge, who have millions of dollars being thrown at them. Which makes it really much harder for these smaller companies that are just trying to get a game launched. Do, do you know what Platypus Industries is estimating for my shipping cost? No. Uh, where did it go? Ah, here it is. So we're talking a simple game here. We're, we're talking like a core game with, I think, two expansions maybe, right? Yeah, that sounds right. $25. Yeah. Now, size-wise, is very different, though. But 52, still. 52 to Alaska and Hawaii, which, is fair. which that's $32 or $36 for um, APOs, which is military mailboxes overseas. Yeah. Australia, where you guys always get screwed, shipping. Yeah, we're paying more than you are. $32. Yeah. yeah. That is completely reasonable for Australian shipping, in my opinion, from what I've looked at. Also, I just want to point out, 
the, the other side of the postage argument very quickly. Everybody that's getting really bitter about having to pay for more postage, all you're doing is paying the prices that we do. And you, for years, have been giving crap to the Australians that complain about it. Get over it. <laughs> Not the same argument, but I'm just pointing it out. Yeah. Um, all so, right. uh, yeah. So, so, so that that's my ending footnote on this: is you big companies out there with your your massive kickstars that are gen- generating seven figures, and here's a a small little tiny company in comparison, who, let's be honest, they did pretty darn well. They did. They they they, they were looking for eighty five thousand. And they got a hundred and seventy nine thousand, yeah, which is still way less than what you big box companies do. Yes, but he's also and a smaller company than he does it all himself, right? And he's still found a way initially, uh, the, still be set, to be seen on the pledge manager to do a reasonable shipping rate. Maybe he's gaming the system of by the time the game's ready to ship, prices will have come down. Who knows? From the discussions I've had with Matthew, he's also someone that plans for all of this stuff in advance as well, though, uh, because he's had dealings with in his real life with shipping companies and stuff. So he plans for this sort of stuff by talking to them in advance to try to prevent what? these sort of... Oh, I know, right? It's amazing. Yeah. Upcoming events. Upcoming events. Tournaments, demos, conventions. You know, that kind of stuff. All right. We're going to kind of run through this because I know we're, we're, we're running very long in the tooth at this point. All right. Gen Con is coming up. August 4th till 7th. PAX West is September 2nd till 5th. PAX Australia is October 7th till the 9th. Uh, Three-day passes are all sold out. Saturday passes are 50% sold out. Uh, and Saturday is your big popular day. So if that's the day you want to go, you probably want to jump on that at this point. Um, like the one day passes are still there, but Saturday is already 50% out. Uh, Most some... important question. Yes. Do you have your three day pass? I do. I've had mine for months. Yeah. Uh, Pax Unplugs, December 2nd till 4th. Um, the tournament for Star Wars Legion took place today, so that's why it's not on the list. There will be a new one next month. Uh, and we will be doing an interview with the guy that runs that next weekend. That will be live to our Patreon on that day, and we'll go out live to everybody else a day or so after. I, I, I'm pretty interested, you know, because, you know, I, I, one, we need to figure out from uh, Socks, you know, like how many people show up to this tournament. Is it a six-man tourney, which, you know, those are fairly easy, you know, but some of these big ones that you see at, like, the big conventions where they got, like, 30, 40 people, like, you know, it's kind of interesting, like, you know, based on the size, it takes more, like, what does the TO have to go through to do that? And I think that I'm looking forward to talking to someone who's in a much bigger market than what I'm used to yeah. as far as what he has to do to do a tournament. Well, I know that they were sold out, so, uh, but I don't know the size yeah. of the store. I don't know the size of the store. I would well, imagine that you're looking at, 10, 15-ish? No, oh, well, it can't be 15, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I'll, I'll tell you this. You know, Sox is in the Air Force, which, and he's in Florida, so that means he's in a population hub, which means there's going to be people. Yeah. All right. Well, especially in Florida. Not, not so much for the Air Force base here, because there's no people here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you very much to those that support us. If you enjoy our content, uh, then please check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash getting tabled. Uh, we only ask for $2 a month. It gives you access to almost everything that we do. Uh, you get early access to the video versions of these podcasts, uh, as well as every other video that we host. Occasionally there's stuff that slip through, but there's always an explanation for it. Um, because there's usually a reason. Uh, Facebook.com slash getting tabled. Instagram is at getting tabled. Uh, Twitter Twitter's is at getting, getting tabled. tabled. I had a blank but blank memory there for a second. Our email is getting tabled at gmail.com. We have a YouTube channel. Did you know that, George? We do have a YouTube channel. If you go to YouTube slash getting tabled, that's our YouTube channel. Dot com you should get getting tabled. 
Oh yeah, youtube.com slash game tabled. Uh if you fancy it, you should uh you should go there and like it and subscribe. And then you'll get notifications of when we uh do uh the video versions of the podcast and put them live and whatever we get other stuff done. Hey, if you don't like what we do, subscribe anyway, because it doesn't cost you anything. So why not? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and finally, I'm finally an affiliate on Twitch. Wait, wait, it fin- it no, finally no. happened this week. You forgot one thing, Bruce. The website is gettingtabled.weebly.com. Oh, okay. It's <laughs> like, <laughs> so, wait, what did I forget? Uh, I finally, I finally hit affiliate on Twitch this week. It finally happened. I was raided by a friend and... I'd been kind of, I'd been struggling to get like the average number above a certain thing. So I have a feely, I have officially gone over that line. So thank you to those that's been supporting me. Come and check me out. I stream twice a week, usually Mondays and Thursdays. Um, I've been doing a lot of Star Citizen of late. Um, there's a game that people have opinions on. I'm enjoying it, honestly. Uh, I do play other things. Uh, I'm well overdue for a hobby stream, and I did say that I would do one after i hit affiliate so that will be coming up uh not it might be this week i can't say for sure but it's definitely coming up within the next two weeks i will give people advance notice quick question yes have you have you ever played get o- getting over it or get over it no i haven't even heard i would look I would love to see you play as, play that game and stream that because that game is probably one of the most frustrating things I have ever seen in my life. Uh, <laughs> I, I streamed get web. Uh, I streamed webbed. That that's possibly my favorite highlight video that I've done. I need to look at a few more of those. Uh, all right. Is that it? Did, did we do all the uh, the upkeep and stuff? Yep, we've done all the upkeep. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For listening to Getting Table. Music used in this podcast was created by Eric Mattias at soundimage.org. Play more games. It's going to be interesting to see if we get hate for that piece.